Okay, to get started, everybody should have a copy of this now, correct? Your landscape management plan rubric. It's called critical thinking competency because it's a rubric developed by the school and I had to implement it in one of my classes and I thought, well, landscape management will be perfect in our landscape management plan. So, the rationale. Again, I know we've gone over this uh, back earlier in the semester, but I want to go over this again. And then we're going to write up on the board how I would do my landscape management plan. Again, please note that you can do it a different way. There's, there's, there's no wrong way to do it, as long as it has all the information that we're looking for. And then your labs actually helped you uh, gather this information. So what you'll do is take those labs and kind of just put it all together. So, But again, uh, the rationale. Critical thinking enables students to make informed decisions while contributing to society at large. Students will be able to identify significant issues, consider relevant information and multiple perspectives, and follow up by making decisions with solid justification. So, one through four. One does not meet the criteria that I've asked you for. Two partially meets. Three meets. Four exceeds. So hopefully you guys will have all fours. And then we have five uh, competencies that we're looking at for. Identify, analyze, interpret, conclude, and justify. So five times four is what? 20. 20. Um, so very easily uh, we will be able to calculate out that base on a score of 100. So let's look at what identify means. And if you have your critical thinking rubric. It's on Blackboard. You guys have a copy of it now looking at it. But it says identify. Identify significant problems and or issues. Well, first of all, we got to identify what we're talking about. And as you can see on the rubric, I said you have to identify the turf grass. That's one example. This is just one example. What are some other things that you have to identify on your property to do a landscape management plan. Existing trees, shrubs, plants. All the plant materials, existing trees, trees and shrubs. We've already done that, right? What are some other things besides turf grass, trees, Hardscapes. and shrubs? Hardscapes. Why do we need to know the hardscapes? What are we going to be doing for our clients? Um, maintain. We'll maintain it, but what did we have happen back in February here at the school? Yeah, snow. We had some snow days, so you may be doing snow removal services for for your client. At least you've priced it, right? You, you're you're gonna you're gonna tell them how much it's gonna cost. So identify how many square feet we have: sidewalks, patios, decks, driveway. We know how much that is. We can figure that off through geodata if your computer. Or the, the website still works where you can highlight it. If not, we had to go in measurement. But at least you were able to pull up an aerial view of your property with Forsyth County Geodata, unless your property was somewhere else. Uh, I don't know all the, the county's geodatas, and I've heard some complaints about some neighboring counties. I won't say which. But hopefully you have a survey or something like that. But you know, if not, you could go out, hand draw it, and actually and have pictures and take the measurements. What are some other things we need to identify? We'll identify the problems, yeah, and that gets down to, to analyzing. But we need to know pine straw, mulched beds. We need to know where they're located. How many square feet of mulch there is? You know, square footage is a big thing. So primarily, pavement, turf, mulched beds, trees, shrubs. Can we think of anything else? Think about the chapters we've we've covered so far. I have a yes, ma'am. So like with my property, I mentioned the white box. Mm -hmm. So should I? I mean, we've all we've been there longer than two years. Mm -hmm. But if I were going to someone's house. Would I want to mention that I could replace them, or what I would do, what I would do with a client like that? 
I would say, sir, ma'am, all right, you have X amount of square feet uh, of gravel. Um, as you can see, you guys have been in the house for a couple years, uh, three years, whatever. Uh, I've noticed that you know, we've got a lot of weeds. We're going to take care of that with spraying, um, but we'd like to freshen up the white rock. You know, that would cost you X amount of dollars. We'd probably want to do that every two or three years, maybe four years, just a light sprinkle, maybe rock some of them out, you know, take a steel rake, move some of them around, and then put just a light color. Because when you move them around a little bit, the bottoms of them will get a little bit of stain from touching the soil. So if we just wanted to dress them up, you know, every three years, four years. Um, and it won't take it won't take nearly as much as doing it the first time. So they can do that, do it that way. Um, you know, they're, you know, it's good to have, you know, around the, uh, the house, you know, a lot of the termite people recommend, you know, even a small 12 inch, you know, separation between the mulch, but, um, you know, it's nothing wrong with having all the shrub beds that way. You just, you, what I would do is give the client that option. You know, I wouldn't do it every year. I'd just give them the option. Um, but what else would we need to identify? Think about the chapters we've read. How much sun the plants are getting in one area. Yeah. But I'm talking, before we get into that, what about what's actually on the site? What was a couple chapters ago? What did we talk about? What do we usually start planning after April 15th, tax day? Annuals. You said annual. Yeah. So seasonal color beds. And does the client have any? Does the client want any? Are we going to maintain that? Or is this something that uh, the homeowner maintains? Do they have any garden space? You know, we've mowed several yards that the individual had a huge garden. We didn't touch. I mean, they just might plow it for them once a year. But, you know, the, the, the husband and wife are out there working in the garden. That was their thing. They just didn't want to deal with having to cut the grass. So we would identify all all aspects of the property from that that we would be taken care of and that would get you a four if you identify everything on there so we're going to look at analyzing we're going to discover or reveal something through detailed examination that's the definition so analyze multiple variables points of view data sources so if you've taken landscape design, which I only have one student here that's taking landscape design, but we talk about site inventory and analysis. This is basically what we've done. We've just inventoried what's there, then we're going to analyze it. Well, if you can see my example here, we identified the turf grass. Our client has tall fescue turf type grass. Well, an analyzation of this is the turf grass is weak. They probably haven't plugged and seeded in several years. They haven't fertilized. Um, you know, several, several things. And if you jump down to interpretation, sufficient or relevant information and the definition of interpret is to perform something such as a song or a role in a way that shows your own thoughts and feelings about it. The interpretation I give here that they have weak turf grass is because it's shady. You know, they have two huge willow oaks in their front yard. And then around the base of the willow oaks, just really weak, doesn't look that good. And the further it gets away from the tree, they start getting a little bit of nice grass. So that was my interpretation. I analyzed it. The turf grass is weak. My interpretation of why it's weak is that it is shady. Well, conclusion draws valid, thoughtful conclusions to decide something after a period of thought or research. Well, my suggestion is, hey, Let's limb up the trees because these willow oaks were hanging way down low. I didn't even want to mow the property. So we go in. I limb up as far as I can. How far should a landscape contractor limb up trees? Up to 20. Because we can reach it with a pole saw. So we could comfortably do that as a landscape contractor. And we may want to talk to an arborist. They may want to go up and thin it up top and that allow more light to get down to the turf grass and we could develop a nice fertility program for the client. They haven't done any plugging or seeding. So 
We've got a lot of compaction underneath it. That willow oak drops a lot of leaves. The guys before just ran the lawnmower back and forth, back and forth, trying to get up all the leaves. They've got a lot of compaction. So by limbing the limbs up, maybe thinning it up top, and doing nice fertility, aeration and seeding, we can bring that turf grass back to life. And we're going to justify this to the client because we can guarantee them a healthy stand of turf grass. As you can see, justify is to provide good reasoning for the actions of doing. The client says, why do you want to do all this? I want your turf grass to look like the neighbors over here that we take care of. And guaranteed, in a neighborhood, you know, the houses are very similar in age, possibly built by two or three builders in certain neighborhoods where a few builders were chosen to build out the, the neighborhood. So you've got the same landscaper that was in there originally doing the landscape. So guaranteed, if this client of yours has two large willow oaks in their yard, it's possible that the neighbor or one down the street has the exact same thing. There's this one tree that's in our front yard, and I've walked around the whole neighborhood, and everyone has that same, in this same place. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, some people have replaced, like, I know this one person was really brave and put a river birch, like, a right corner oh. of their house. And I was like, oh, okay. The, <laughs> and that, and, and that's good. And a lot of times the developer will say, hey, builders, plant river birch, two river birch in every house, so many far from the side. So they create that form of unity through the neighborhood. But then you have the builders that hires his favorite landscaper that can only use the same plant material. And what are these, these landscapers out there doing? They don't know their plant material, so they go buy what's readily available. And willow oaks, sugar maples, and then they're going to buy two or three for the house, you know, each house. They're going to look the same. You know, the houses are the same except maybe the color of the roof or the color of the brick. But nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's 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 how the builders make money, and they can actually change things up that way, you know, by changing out uh, different colors. But landscapers, they need to use different plant material, especially if they're uh, landscaping side by side. But going back to justification, if we justify our client, hey, sir, ma'am, we take care of the one down the street. They've got a couple willow oaks in their front yard, but look how healthy their turf grass is. Let us do that. So that's what I want you guys to do. Identify, analyze, interpret, conclude, and justify. So we're going to identify everything that's on the property. Everything that's on the property. And guys, don't point out everything that's bad. Tell your clients good things too. They don't want to hear negative stuff about their property. But if we run into a situation like that where we have, and hopefully, I mean, probably most of you guys are doing your own properties or doing it for a family friend or a uh, family member. Um, and hopefully it's residential because you, yeah, I wouldn't want you guys to do your first one on a huge commercial site. Um, but what could be some problems with our plant material? Well, we've just identified two things right here. We had willow oaks and tall turf fescue. The fescue was weak because of the willow oak. The willow oaks there are gorgeous, but the limbs are hanging low. We want to thin, raise the limbs up. We want to thin it up, up top, get our arborist in there. And justification of that is so we can have healthier turf grass. So we just killed two birds with one stone right there. So what about... What about some other issues that you could identify? Um, well, I know my we our dogs. Mm -hmm. uh, their main area is our backyard, mm -hmm. and we're not walking around the neighborhood, so like pet waste and things like that, to, like totally butcher mm -hmm. the grass. So like mainly, um, like their urine and things, like it's caused patches, huge, <laughs> huge patches and stuff like that. Yeah, you know, cigarette butts and you know. Nasty, um, well, let's take dog for instance. We go to a client's house and we go in the backyard and we automatically see, we're like, oh, I don't want to bring my brand new walker mower from Wino down there. <laughs> I better say Riddle Farm Tractor too. Uh, two good guys, two good guys. But you've got this brand new walker, you're taking it in the backyard, and you, as soon as you're going around the house, you, you can just smell it. Oh, that's disgusting. They've got two huge Labrador retrievers. 
and you get back there and you start seeing the piles. You see the difference in turf grass color. Well, you've identified the turf grass. The turf grass is having issues because of dog feces and urine. What you can do, recommendation, is to take out some of that turf grass. My dogs love going in the woods. That's you know, we walk them on a leash at night. One of them is a lap. One of them is a lap. Um, he'd rather not go in the front yard or the backyard. He wants to go out to where the wood line is, and he'll drag me and pull me, and I'll fall down and catch him. But he's going to run to the wood lines. He wants to use the restroom in the leaves and the taller weed stuff that's at the the, the base of the shrubs. So what you can do is create a natural area, take out some of that grass. And that can just start with being pine needles, mulch, and a few trees, and eventually just kind of wood it. I mean, that's a recommendation. Because uh, the dog, dogs just prefer that. Sometimes. Huh? Sometimes, yeah. And it depends on how it depends on how bad they gotta go. I mean they're like terrified in the front yard, so they're like, 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 I mean, if you have dogs, it shouldn't even be a problem. Yeah. <laughs> we do every day. <laughs> so. Yeah, the other things are fungus, insects. Um, and first, what you'd have to do, you'd have to correctly identify the grass. Yeah. You'd have to, you know, why is the turf grass weak or is it healthy? You've determined you've got cool season fescue, and you're starting to, when you go and do a site tour, you're able to just pick up chunks of grass you're like what's going on here and then you pick it out and you look around and you see grubs so then you'd make the recommendation of um, you know a pesticide to get to get rid of the grubs you get rid of the grubs you'd get rid of voles as well so basically it's just going there and identifying the turf grass identifying the problem Making that recommendation and then how, you know justifying it why. Well, if we get rid of the grubs, we'll have a better stand of grass. All these clumps won't come up, and you'll see that. You see little problems like this. You know what you just said, Joe. It's going to be in the same yard with that Devetta saw with 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 dogs. You know somebody that's really neglected their their property. They're going to see they're going to see more and more problems. Remember when I told you guys the other day about a friend of mine that retired school teacher and he just cuts a few lawns? He does not take the property on if it's not picture perfect. He's like, I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to deal with problems. I just want to mow grass, weed eat it, spray a few weeds, and leave. He said, I don't, I don't want to take care of problems. I just want to cut grass. And he's making great money. Retired school teacher, mowing a lot of yards, takes time off when he wants to. Just him and one other guy. About yeah, yeah, and we'll talk more in pest management about that. You know, the vertebrate pest. But yeah, you're not supposed to. What you, what you have to do is get rid of their food source, and they leave. Yeah. So, um, but you kind of see how I'm coming, speaking about the rubric for this project. You identify analyze and you interpret why it's happened so I've looked I've, I've identified this plant material this turf grass I analyze it it's either going to be good it's going to be weak or it's going to be totally bad you're going to interpret it why is it that way then you're going to draw a conclusion of what you can do and then you're going to justify it and that's usually because it's going to bring it back to healthy standards so if there's not any questions on the rubric We'll move in on how to start putting the plan together. Any questions uh, on the rubric? And for those of y'all that are taking the online course, you can email me the questions. And you guys can, can email me questions as, as well.
I'll be checking my email more frequently now, uh, you know, in the evenings and stuff because I know we're getting down to the nitty gritty with with the semester. Uh, I think my main question is with this this stuff. Do you would you want it just like typed up on a separate page? That's what we're getting ready. To, okay. I'm gonna walk you step how I would personally do it. But like Devetta, if you see something else, how you want to, do it, there's really no wrong way to put this together. That's what I'm saying. But I'm going to show you how to do it. And usually, I would follow my teacher. You see what I'm saying? But adding your personal touch uh, in some properties, um, you know, may not have some of, the, some of the problems. It's okay to state that you have cool season fescue or you have zoysia grass. And from a horticulture professional background, I don't see any problems with this turf grass. But usually there's going to be something. We're, we're going to be developing a fertility program anyway. And hopefully, I think it's a little easier to take care of cool season lawns. I know we're in that transition zone, but it's just more of those exist here in the triad than the warm season. But there's, there's great information out there uh, for fertility programs on each. So, well, let's look at how we'll get started. And instead of showing you an example that I've done, it's easier just to write it on the board and talk about it as we go. Um, but do a title page. Title page. What should we have on the title page? Your name, property, uh, property's name. So let's do property name. Address. Again, we need to know where it's located. It would be really nice, especially in Microsoft Word, if you did this in a table and you had, you know, two to three pictures that are really nice about the property. Uh, because clients love seeing pictures of their property on on documentation like this. You can get some, you know, just a nice front view of the house. You know, if it's got a nice deck in the patio, just kind of just make them feel good about what they've got. But you'd have the title page, the property name, the address, two to three pictures, your company name, but I'm not requiring you to have that. So you just wanted to put your name and then HOR 116 Landscape Management 1. There's actually Landscape Management 2, but we only teach Course 1. So that'll be like your company name. And then please put uh, SP 2015, Spring 2015, or type that out. Just say I can see your name 116. Landscape Management 1, Spring of 2015. That's your title page. So submit, make it pretty. Make it pretty. Don't have it just plain text. You know, little catchy things like that. You know, it's just like your title page in Landscape Design 1. You make your title block real pretty and bold and colorful things like that sell your design you unleashed a monster <laughs> uh, so you monster as well I think my word documents are really pretty like I don't and you know if, you, if this is your page you know that's the eight and a half by eleven you know and you've got like you know how like an Instagram and stuff you can do like one big picture and I think that's cool and then you add a little borders around it and that's where you put your name, Spring 2015, and then here's your title. Make it nice. Make it neat. Plain Times New Roman 12 font is boring. The client's not going to look through it. They're not going to be really adamant about doing, looking at your project if they're comparing it to somebody else's. It sells, guys. 
especially to the people who care about their property and are not about the bottom dollar. So nobody ever photoshops the picture of Mega Man and looks like it made micro can do it. I don't think. There's nothing wrong with doing that, especially with like Photoshop Pro Landscape. Yeah. Now, I mean, then, now, before, after. Yeah, you can do like a before now. But I mean, we remember we're not doing a design; we're we're doing landscape management. Yeah. But I would I would just pick out you know two or three pictures that are really really nice about the property. Enhance it. And what I would do like in Photoshop and stuff is do you know make it make the picture brighter or you know do the little fades around the outs little little cute things like that that pop it so um, next we'll do our table of contents page two What do you guys think would probably be the next thing we'd want to put in here? Think about it. our title page identified the property. This is the name, the address. What would be good to have on the next page? List of things going into the property. Not quite yet. What was one of the labs that you did? We just talked about it. So, some of the counties had. Remember, I said some of the counties didn't have as good as oh. what Forsyth County had Geo the geodata. So let's do page one. Let's do our our map. Map. Map of the property. Page one's the map of the property. It can be the sketch that you've done. It can be the Forsyth County geodata print off. But it does need to, you know, if this is the property, you know, you need to have the driveway, the house, the side, you know, <coughs> needs to be it needs to be everything. Got a deck. I mean, it, it needs to be fairly simple. But what else it needs to have is need to have the dimensions, the lot size. Everybody tracking? Yes. So. Page one, map of the property. That's just blank. Page two, with our property, what, what do you think would be good next? Hmm? Identifying everything. And that could be, you could actually have the exact same property map. There's those two willow oaks. We got uh, sugar maple in the back. And you can just draw lines. You know, make them, for those of you who's taking design, just a little, but you know, just take a ruler and draw straight lines to it. And you can, uh, if it's in Word, you can insert text, right? Well, how about Instead of that being black, hard to read, I don't have red, but something like, you know, a different color.
You guys have already you've already identified the plant materials is there. And what else should I see written on here? Square footage of house. No. Identify, identify the uh, the turf grass, and just write it on there. You're identifying everything that's on that property. Make sure that if that's a wooden deck, say wooden deck. That if it's an asphalt driveway, say it's asphalt. If it's concrete, state that they have a concrete side uh, concrete driveway. Okay, I got a question. So to help identify, can you like look up on the internet? Help about the plants. Yeah. You're either gonna have a warm season or a cool season grass. Mm -hmm. Do you know that about your property? You should because you've already done the turf grass lab. Yeah. It's probably going to more than likely be tall fescue. I mean, that's just that's that's a given. Uh, but. You'd need to verify it. I mean, you do need to verify it. Um, you know, guys at Lesco and stuff would be able to help you do that too. Um, but yeah, you can uh, uh, NC State turf files. If, if everybody would just Google NC State turf files, and they've actually got an app that you can download for, for your phones, but they have a turf grass identifier. And it's like if you take a sample from the lawn and you're sitting there at the computer, you're looking at it. It'll help you identify what turf grass is. So you'd need to see, you know, see some of the roots of the turf grass, the rhizomes, the shoots, everything. You know, gets you a good little sample, and you should be able to identify it uh, pretty easily. So is that NC turf files? Just Google NC State. This is from the university. NC State, NC State University turf files. T U R F F I L E S. Turf files. turf files. Mm -hmm. And there's an app that you can download to your smartphones. So, page two, we've got everything identified. So now for page three. And guys, you may have a property that may take page pages two and three. You see what I'm saying? Not everything has to fit uh, on the one page. I'm just giving you an example. If this was a tiny little house that it all fits on an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper. You know, if you've got a big property with multiple sections, you may have four pages. You may do the back, you may do the front on a page. You may do the left and right side on the page. That is totally up to how you want to do it. It doesn't all have to fit. For page three, we've identified things. What should we start doing now? We look at our rubric. We've identified. Is this page four? Page three was identified. Is this page table contents? Uh, page four. Page, what was page one? The map. Page two was identified. Page three. Page three is identified. Page three is what I had. Huh? Did you start listing all the problems? Yeah, analyzing. You start analyzing. Look, I said, if you look back at the rubric, I identified the turf grass and I've analyzed it. Turf grass is weak. So, this is totally up to you guys. Do you want to do it with a map? And don't tell me yeah or nay that you're going to do it. I'm saying that it's it's really up to you. You can have your map. Again, turf is weak. Or you can go to paragraph form. You can start doing bullets. Yeah. Turf, grease, turf grass is weak. I recommend that if you do do it in bullets, 
that you go all the way through. You'd say tall fescue, because again you're identifying it again, is weak due to maple, not maple, but willow oaks, due to willow oak trees. Recommend limbing up and thinning from arborists, from arborists and incorporating fertility program. Da -da 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 -da. Me personally, I will go ahead and start jumping into bullet paragraph forms. So, we we analyze and recommend at the same on the same. I would with that, okay. and then we'll have supporting documentation of like our fertility program. And you know we've just identified again the turf, all fescue, willows. We're explaining we're taking care of that. Well, what might be some other reasons because of the willow oaks dropping to the limbs? Mm -hmm. You know, if there's any shrubs underneath that, it would be a problem. Also, the leaves. The leaves. Yeah. And by thinning out the tree, we reduce leaf volume. Mm -hmm. So, we'll do that on page three. This could be page three to four to five. Just depends on the property. A lot, a lot of the yards are just need a major cleanup for you to get started. I always recommend that, even with your existing clients. And always kind of felt the need before we even took the lawn mowers over to the property. Dad'd be like, "It's time to go, Mike. Let's get the mower." And I'm like, "Dad, shouldn't we go and pick up sticks? You know, I mean, the big big limbs fell out of trees." You know, just blow some leaves, kind of, you know. I, I, and I personally, I'd like to take four or five guys with leaf rakes and we just start, I mean, just rake the yard to the street. That way, when we come back and mow, it's ready to go. <coughs> it's clean. I, I hate hearing those sticks and acorns and everything, you know, sucked up into to the chute of the mower and you hear it just clanking and knocking. You know, you do damage to the mowers. Mowers are made to cut turf grass, not not sticks that are you know big as your thumb. Acorns. <laughs> you know, there could be all kinds of stuff that you hit with the mower and it tune. There's a car coming by. Ooh, boom. You know? Dangerous. So it's better just to do a good cleanup like that. Blow off the patio, blow off the sidewalks. And again, that's something that can be done early months. It could be done as early as end of February, first of March. Just a good spring cleanup. You know, and that and that would be kind of what you estimate. Hey, if I take five guys over there with myself for one hour, that's five man hours. You know, I'm doing fifty bucks an hour. It's two hundred fifty bucks to spring cleanup. Just offer that to them. You know, I can be part of it. So you could do that on this page. Hmm? Maybe. And then we'll, uh, yeah. I mean, you could recommend the spring cleanup. You know, hey, the yard's kind of looking kind of bad. We need to clean it up before we before we go. Again, like I said, I love taking rakes and getting all those acorns and stuff out. And it just looks good when you leave. And that can also be done at the time of pine needling. If you're pine needling uh, in uh, January, February, kind of that time frame. If they didn't want it right before Christmas, especially you know, park complexes and stuff like that, that 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 aren't so picky about you know. Family members coming in and they want everything picked and perfect. You can even do it as early as December. If it's a high end client that's like, hey, I want my yard mowed again prior to Christmas. But you may have to go back and do it again later on in the spring because we have the ice, we have the snow, we have the winds, we're losing stuff in the trees that, that hit the turf. So, well, next thing we can start doing. Uh, we start listing prices of doing these things. So what? Uh, we're at page four. If we had the small yard, well, before we start listing prices, I want you to start listing sizes. So 
turf, we have 3,500 square feet. You've got mulched beds of 1,200 square feet. Whatever it is, whatever it is, we have a driveway. We have a driveway of um, 1,100 square feet. We have a sidewall, and that we need to say if that's concrete or asphalt. That matters if you're doing snow removal. Sidewalks. Now we have 500 square feet. And just start listing everything. <clears throat> Annuals. You have an annual bed at the mailbox. You know, 100 square feet. We shouldn't miss anything less than 100, right? According to the book. So start listing all your sizes of things that you're dealing with. It's good for you. It's good for the client. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? What do you have to look at like the deck? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Everything. We yeah. We have a patio. If you have a patio, what kind of patio? Is it brick paver? Is it flagstone? Is it slate? Is it concrete? Is it a deck? Is it a hardwood? You know, the treated. Is it the plastic? You know, they a lot of these recycled, you know, they're taking recycled plastic and making lumber boards out of it. It looks really neat. So, what about 200? Like, would you want something super specific, like what kind of wood it is? No, no. Like, you, like years ago or not. No, it's, and it's a treatment as to who you're treated. Yeah, it's probably just going to be you know, treated just, lumber. Right. Yeah, but you'd know the difference if it was that recycled. Plastic, we call them like milk jug decks, but I mean they look nice. They look nice, uh, but they're not gonna have the splits. They're just they're. Yeah. It's peeling that. Yeah. 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 Ye
the mother and father live here and the the father or the husband his parents live next door well they since passed and as either their son or daughters bought the place and they're living side by side so we cut both of them together so it's kind of you know just this huge and they own some acreage and then there's a pond at the bottom of it we have to get down there and weed eat the pond but i was inside the the husband and wife's and i was brought by the fence and i seen this black snake and then he curled up and he was just like at the tires just striking the tires i, I was just, i got you know how you get the cold chills you got yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was just but that thing took off like lightning i mean it just did a beeline to the lake and i told the lady i was like i just saw a snake she started freaking out. you better kill it you better kill it eric you better I'm like, I can get near it. <laughs> I, I could just see that thing coming up on the lawnmower and being there on the deck, and I'm just like, You're running. <laughs> <laughs> <All the lawnmower>. <laughs> <laughs> lawnmower drives lawnmower through the house. <laughs> but, the, most of the time, I just kind of leave them be and, and kind of uh, not even mention it. Um, not, don't like them. No, I don't even like the little green ones or the little brown ones. I used to catch them. Like, the That's my nephew. Yeah, really catch black snake in our yard. But we, you know, we have what, are, what is our dangerous snake? The one that we have. Copperhead. Yeah. Three dangerous snake. Copperhead. Have, like they're all around our face. So we're just like, let's hope that they don't have a cockroach over your face and kill us this year. Well, you won't. You won't see a coral snake or a rattlesnake in Forsyth County. Just copper. Part of the east. Yeah. Part of the east, east, yeah. east coast is copperhead, rattlesnake, and coral snake. Yeah. I saw a coral snake. I think it was a coral snake. It was so fast, it moved so fast, it was either a coral snake or a king snake. Yeah. And their coloring. It's very similar. Five foot of poison, but not poison. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, so we sized the property. And guys, I know we've done a lot of information for this, for this property. What's the chances if we didn't get this job? Uh, I'm, I'm just saying, what if we did this for a property and we didn't, didn't get it? I mean, and would you I mean, want to leave all this information with the client? No, I, mean, I mean, you could later if they wanted, if they discovered, well, we could use the work. But here's, let's say. I'm presenting it to you, Devetta. Mm -hmm. I've got your landscape management plan. I want to take care of your yard. Mm -hmm. You discuss it with your uh, with your family. No, Eric, we're not going to hire you. Well, either you tell me at the kitchen table where I'm presenting you the information, and I leave you the documents, mm -hmm. thinking I may or may not get the job. Well, I'm not even out of the neighborhood, and you call me. I don't think we're going to use you, but thanks for this landscape management plan. It'll really help us out and get the cheaper guy to do the work. Uh, yeah, I would take it. Huh? I would take it, but I'm oh, sorry. All right, I'll just well, take it, here's the thing. You may only be meeting with one, you know, the husband or the wife. They may need to discuss it with their spouse in the evening, uh, and they may want to compare apples to apples. What I recommend doing, you know, I try to talk to both the husband and wife together, and I like taking it in on a laptop or a or an iPad, something that I can just here it is, and then here's your bottom dial. And ma'am, sir, if you get if we get this work, I will email you a copy of this so you'll have it for your reference. Same thing with the landscape design on Pro Landscape. They've got an app on the iPad. But you can upload the pictures that you've done for the clients and the drawing, the two to plan drawing, so you're not having to give them stuff, leave it there at the table. That's when things, bad things can happen. Well, can you just leave us that drawing? You've just spent 25 hours doing a landscape design for these people. And the next thing you know, well, we decided not to do it. You drive back a month later, there's your design implemented. So I like taking it in electronically. And then email it to them if we get it. Because if you take a copy in, can we just keep that copy? We just need to think about it, discuss it. 
And what do you do before you leave? We talked about this in marketing and management. Devetta, can I do your landscape work? Yeah. Can you ask? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Get them, get them to tell you. Do your best to tell them. Say, I want, I want, you know, am I going to be your landscape contractor? Ask them. So, with the sizes, I know we'd mentioned the sizes, and with our labs that we had done, like uh, we took pictures of mulched beds. You can include some pictures in there. You have mulched bed spaces of 1,200 square feet, 2,000 square feet. You can actually take pictures of that. You have the 100 square foot seasonal bed by the mailbox. You can insert your picture there. This is where we'd start incorporating some of those labs that we took. Leaf removal. You know, you can put a statement in there. Uh, you know, we think this property will take five man hours uh, twice during the fall season to get up your leaves. Insert some pictures of the large trees as you reference that. So we sized everything. Well, first of all, we've identified it. We told us the problems, uh, analyzed it, and then we started giving descriptions of the sizes. So what can we do now? And this would be what page five, five ish or so. Well, at some point, you got to make a plan. Yes. Uh, your fertilization, kind of a soaker, you said it's going to take a year to get your yard. Yeah, well, and that's, I would verbally state that. You know, we need the full year. Hmm? Like, uh, um, we've already already been doing this year. Have we justified it? Have we done all that yet? Well, that should be kind of done in those paragraph oh, statements. Yeah. So now we start talking about it. Let's start talking moolah. <laughs> and the wife, more than likely, is going to want to read everything. The husband's going to flip to the end. What's that bottom dollar? How much am I going to be writing you a check for each month? Sir, we don't take checks. It's cash only. <laughs> So we start talking about price. Well, mowing. Hey, forty-five dollars a cut. Whatever you want it to be, I'm not going to grade you on like really. You going to charge on that? You tell me what you're making as the landscape management contractor. If you're doing forty-five dollars a cut, tell me mowing forty-five dollars per cut. We plan on doing 32 to 36, or give them a hard number. It's up to you. I'm always in between 32 and 36 cuts a year. This 36, I like saying 36 because it kind of helps me out with leaf remote. Kind of helps you get a little extra on that. Because I'm, if I'm mowing it with a walker, I'm going to be getting the leaves up with a walker. Mowing. All right, fertility. Uh, Tilly program. We've discussed that. We had a lecture on it. However many visits you do, and then what the cost is, you have a six step program. It could be seven, whatever it is per visit. Is it 50? Is it 65? It's whatever you set the price to be. So we're covering our turf. We're covering our fertility. Spraying weeds. Not in the lawn because your fertility program takes care of your lawn. Spraying weeds in beds. Um, mulch or pine needles. Mulch or pine needles. What's your cost? What do I recommend doing? Do I give them a price for bail or do I give them a contract price to do it? Hmm? So if, that's gonna, if I'm going to use 45 bales and I'm charging 10 bucks a bail, spread it, you know, purchase and spread them, 10 bucks is, is a good thing. I think you should, should get, I mean, we've seen them get up to 12. That plus the mulch? No. 
No, because you can buy a bale of pine needles for what, four or fifty-five bucks as a landscape contractor, five bucks to put it out, and you know, and to roll the edges back with a backpack blower, do a nice cleanup for that. Well, it's four hundred fifty bucks. So I'd say four hundred fifty bucks. Same thing with mulch. If it's mulch, it's harder for a client to go and get mulch. But I mean, I've seen people take a Honda Civic and put bales of pine needles in the trunk and in the back seat. I used to work at Home Depot Garden Center part-time on weekends. I've, I've put pine straw in places I would have never put it. Brand new Mercedes come in and load the trunk up with all kinds of stuff. And they're like, well, let's put the rest in the back seat. Yep. I did that for a brand new BMW. Put one in the trunk, two in the back seat. Yeah. They'll be. Uh, they told me to try to put it in the passenger. Just bolt it in. And then he was like, oh, wait, I can take my mic off. I think I'd use the water before I did that. Yeah, yeah. But probably where she was at, might not sold trash bag. We could have at Home Depot, but if they're working. Plastic. Plastic. They didn't care. They didn't care, did they? They're like, I'm going to go get it cleaned up. Well, your fertility program is going to uh, include the herbicide. It'll, for the turf. But yeah, like you may you may spray weeds every other week when you're mowing on, in the shrub beds yeah. and in the sidewalks and pavement. Okay. Yes. What, would I, what would I call what I would do to clear up my right off? Like, what would I call it? Like, turning them over, cleaning them off? Like, what, what I'd just say uh, bed maintenance. And you know, refreshing the, the white rock, and I'd put refreshing the white rock optional. I'm trying to figure out how would you price in my yard have really bad drainage and bad grading. So every time it rains, it just puddles, and that whole area is dead. It's just seven acres of flat land. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, how would you how would you price that? Like, what would you charge for that? I wouldn't include it on the landscape management plan. Because what we're thinking about doing is a monthly cost. Yeah. That's something that you would price separate for your client and say that I would probably, you know, sir, ma'am, I'm going to need a skid steer for a day. I'm going to need a tractor for a day. I need to really till this up and then do some grading. And that would be a separate price. I wouldn't. Oh and, yeah. So, but my grass looks bad. So send me just yeah, and what you could do. A recommendation from from management standpoint is, is good aeration, getting holes in the ground, and let some of that water go through, and then recommending that we need to regrade this yard out because you don't want to do something you don't want to do five thousand dollars worth of work for somebody, and then they say, well, we want it divided into monthly payments. No, because. Ideally, when you do this landscape management plan, people are going to say, well, what's my monthly cost, you know, one-year cost? You don't want to do $5,000 worth of grading and seeding to fix that drainage issue and then divide it over 12 months. You do your management or your maintenance stuff of the property in the landscape management plan and then give them a separate landscaping estimate to take care of that in the front. But you could explain that in your landscape management plan when we were talking about doing the bullets and stuff. The yard has bad drainage issues, would would like to give you an estimate on fixing that. Um, so basically, we're going to go down everything. Mulch, annuals, how much it would be to cost to replace the annuals. Uh, how much it would be to do leaf removal. How much um, snow removal? You know, if it snows, uh, you know, if it snows two inches, it's going to cost a hundred dollars to come and shovel your sidewalk. If it snows two inches, we come and plow your driveway. You know, hundred bucks, whatever, whatever your cost is, whatever your cost is. I would recommend leaving snow optional, and you can just say that in your estimate. Even the book, even the book, you look at how uh, the last chapter in the book that we studied last week, uh, 
they list some optional pricing. You know, just put in parentheses optional. And it's not because, again, we may not have anything. And here's the thing. If you charge them for it, they're going to expect you to be there for a quarter inch snow, and which would be melted, uh, you know, very, very quickly. Give them the option. And then if it does snow, what's wrong with sitting in your office having somebody call? Hey, we give you that price on, on snow removal. Would you like one of our crews to come by and plow your driveway and shovel your sidewalks? Yeah, 200 bucks. It's on the estimate we give you. And then with the stuff that you're going to be doing, like the mowing, the fertility, the pine straw, the spraying of the weeds, even the seasonal color, you can add that. Add that all up and divide by 12 and give them a monthly price. The snow removal I would leave out, and I would even recommend, I'm not making you do it, but I would leave out the pine straw and mulch and let that be a separate charge. But for simplicity, you can include it uh, in the monthly price. A lot of people will say, hey, let's cut back on I want to cut back on the fertilization, the, those kind of costs, the aeration. Yeah, and don't forget aeration and seeding. That's a big thing. Aeration, seeding. You know, a lot of people look at it and say, hey, we, we just don't want to fertilize three times a year. Well, but in your back. justification, because you've identified the turf grass, you've analyzed it, you've interpreted it, you concluded, and you're like, ma'am, sir, if you want your yard to look like the Hicks next door, meaning Joe Hicks's property, this is what you need. This is really what you need. Don't don't get your feelings hurt when your yard isn't as dark green colored as that next year at this time. You know, I'll do it three times, but we recommend that's why we have a six step or seven step program, whichever one you guys come up with. The justification is you're going to have the best looking yard in the neighborhood or you're going to be keeping up with the Joneses. It, it's it's that mentality. Yes, people may want to cut back. But seriously, you cut a $45, if you, you know, instead of doing six and you do three visits, they've saved $145 off of a total 12-month contract. What are they going to save? Ten bucks a month in the monthly payment? But I agree with what you're saying, Joe. There's people that are that are going to question that. It'll look good, but it's whatever. It'll look good or it'll spring and say, well, it's going to fertilize the spring. Of course, you know, it always comes back. But see, then, but then again, if you didn't do it, there'll be the same ones complaining, you ain't took care of my yard, we're going to fire you and get rid of somebody. You, you'll start to learn people when you start dealing with the public. And you'll know up front when you meet them, you talk to them on the phone. Is this somebody that I can say I do a six step program? Or is this something to say, hey, we're going to fertilize your yard? We're going to fertilize, mow. You don't even have to tell them six times. We're going to do fertility apps. Mm -hmm. You know, fertility apps would be included in a monthly program. And trust me, you're going to have one or two people. Don't price it individually, just list what you do. And that's okay. You can you can itemize this: mowing, fertilizing, spraying weeds, mulch, and there's no prices on the side. You just add it up at the bottom and divide by twelve. There's going to be people like that because then they'll start nitpicking this. Well, why are you charging me thirty-five to mow when I think it should be thirty-three? I mean, you'll hear it. Mm -hmm. So you may not want to tell them exactly what each line. You want to do it for yourself. But you could list all the services for that page and then just divide by 12 and give them a monthly price. I mean, you still need to say I'm a mow 32 times. Uh, you know, you, you kind of do need to tell them the fertility is six times. But you don't have to tell them the price. They're just looking at that monthly price at the bottom. You can do that. But for this project, let's list everything for you because you're going to do that anyway. And then what you do is just delete those costs if you knew that it was that type of client that you were dealing with. And trust me, you learn people. You learn people working in the public. You know, I wish the economy was better. 
Don't we all? It's lawn care. It's, yeah. it's landscaping. Yeah. Yep. So do we have any more questions about the landscape management plan? I have one just to make sure that I'll be doing it properly. For the yes. Okay, so like with the mowing, forty five bucks a cut. So forty five times thirty six and then like do the max. Like, like yeah. So just, okay. So what'd you come up with? I see you got your calculator. Oh. Okay. Uh, I'll add it to the numbers. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's Monday. We're all <laughs> yeah, and I'm gonna be here for another like, twelve hours. Eight, yeah, twelve hours. So Monday already got the whole week to look forward. So so it'll be like two ninety five plus some change for every month. Every month. And yeah, I divided it all by five. Yeah. So you did forty five. I just own it. Yeah, I did forty five uh, times the thirty six. Forty five times thirty six. Uh -huh. And that gives you uh, one thousand six twenty. <coughs> And then you divide it by 12. What was that? Uh, that is 135. 135. That's just for the mowing, the 12 months. Okay, so you need to separate. No, you don't do that. No, no, no. I'm just saying, well, what if you had a client that just wanted mowing oh, and divide it? It wouldn't be really beneficial to you because in May, that could have five weeks and you're getting forty five dollars a cut, you mowed it two weeks for free. But when you add everything together, but you just kind of seeing how how we divide it into twelve months. But if you add the mulch, you add the spray in, you add the fertility, <laughs> if you did add the pine straw, if you add it all in, your monthly payments go up. Yeah, because I mine is a large chunk. It's two ninety five and like forty one forty two cents per month. For for your whole project. Yeah. Two forty nine? Two ninety five. Two ninety forty two cents. Okay. Well, that doesn't sound bad at all. I mean that's sellable. Okay. That's sellable. Yeah. Um, I mean because loan more payments can be as much as that. Or as insects and like fungus the extra, right? has to be your extra because unless you notice it in the initial site inventory and you interpret it and you conclude that you justify to your client you've had grubs yeah but what we all do on that page is list is list insects and uh, fungicide uh, an optional treatment weeds are going to be there it's just you include it in your program Weeds and feed. Okay. Grass is going to need to be weeded and you're going to have to give it food. Now, you may or may not have insects and you may or may not have a fungicide. So, price those optional. And we even see you go to Lesco, John Deere, and you see these flea and tick applications. We even say flea and tick applications available. Because people hear that, and you're like, ah, I can put something on my yard that'll help my dog when he goes out and poops. Because we don't have the money to do the, the natural bed in the back, but at least he's not bringing in fleas and ticks. So, try to list everything optional. You wouldn't want to list your well and comp or whatever. Just list the whole thing. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
whatever. I've got health insurance, so it's whatever. I'll just have to maybe something about you can't, being injured. You can't fake it. If it's just you, Mr. Hicks, and not one employee, you're okay without workman's comp. But yeah. the day, the day you hire an employee, you've got to have insurance. But, you know, initially you're just going to be, not going to be paying taxes, going to be cash. I mean, come on, man, be real. You're working you're mowing 30 yards a week. Yeah, but you have to pay taxes. Yeah, but you have to pay taxes. But that's any money that you're giving. Yes, the OBO is like, he owes. Which, uh, he has to turn it all in. Anybody you're giving, you have to pay super big taxes on it. I know that you don't so recommend it's not it. A, it's not as bad as you think. I I got a little bit back this year. Not a, not enough to, to do anything with. You know? It, it, it's not like we could go on a vacation with it or that we could pay some bill. We got just a little bit back. And that was because I was mobilized. I make more with the Army than I do here. And I was mobilized for for uh, almost five months of, of that year because the year was divided. So five months, I had Army pay. Well, the rest of the year, seven months, I made more in the Army than I did here teach school with seven months. But that increase put me in a higher tax bracket, which I didn't get hardly anything back. Mm -hmm. Now, being self-employed, dude, I'm just happy if I break even. Yeah, that you don't nice. owe. Yeah. And as she just right. said, her dad, and probably what your dad could do is, is write off a few more things. Yeah. You know. He's going to earn. Has, has he bought any new equipment lately? A new vehicle? Yeah, but it doesn't do much. But even that, I would run. I paid, when I, had, when I was building houses, I paid for my truck payment and my wife's truck payment out of the business account. I went to my accountant. I said, how can I do this? He said, as long as you have your logo somewhere on that truck. So we both, on the back of the windshield, had my logo and website. We had tags and we had door magnets. So it was a legal truck owned by the company doing it. And he's like, you know, she has to do something in her car to help the business. You can't just take the kids to school and go to the grocery store. And then her to her job, but she ran to the bank every day for me, making deposit. He's like legal vehicle on the street working for the business, and it had her name on it. Simple things like that. So Joe, don't get too scared about it. But when you have two or three employees, and the day one of your employees gets called, you're gonna wish and hope that you had that that insurance on. That's gonna be a whole lot cheaper than paying their hospital bill. And then if they get hurt on the job and the doctor says they can't work for four weeks, you have to pay their salary for four weeks and pay the hospital bills. Workers' comp would take care of all that for you based on payroll premiums. And the smaller your business is, the less employees you have, so your, your premiums are going to be smaller. So don't – and be thankful for that. And it's like I've always told people, man – I'm proud to pay my taxes. I mean, I am. Yeah. I'm, an, I'm an American. I love this country. I have a job. I, you know, I, I love this job, and I like what I do, and, and I'm pr proud to be here at the school. And I, so, when they take out my taxes, I'm like, that's me giving back to to my community, to my state, to my country. Now, yes, when I get a little bit back, that's always nice because they. And if when you get stuff back, it's because the government's taking more than they should have from you. You see what I'm saying? You know, a tax return isn't, you shouldn't wait all year to get your tax return and say, oh, I finally made some money. You're getting, you're getting back what you paid in. The government took too much out. But the from what they keep from me, yes, I'm proud to have public school systems. I'm proud to have public roads. I mean, so I guess. So what would be the, the minimum you would, you would when you start a business? Uh, what, okay, let's say you made. Well, that's, let's say you made two hundred dollars a week. Now, would you would you work for cash or would you start claiming that? If you're mowing two hundred dollars worth a week, yeah, I would keep that in my pocket and yeah. say. Exactly, that's how people. You don't start out with the forty yards. You know. 
But you can when you take my marketing and management class, right? you'll see how you can get that many. <laughs> But here's the thing if you're to the point where you need to hire somebody, you're making money. Yeah. Again, don't think about, oh my gosh, I've got 50 yards and it's just me, myself, and I. Then it might be time to get somebody else to help you. But then then, you then you're making get, money. You have to get insurance. And, so once you get, uh, my understanding is once you get make enough to where you have to pay taxes and then you get a corporate, then you can start writing stuff off. But by that time, you've got all the equipment you need. And here's the, th and here's the thing. If you don't pay any taxes, how are the bank ever going to loan you any money? They got to see that your business is making money. I know. I, I, I do stuff backwards, but no. try go into the bank and say, "I need to buy a new truck because I'm a loan care guy. I cut a hundred yards a week." Well, let me see your tax returns from last year. No, they all pay me cash. Um, next, please. We'll, can you go? Just we'll we'll talk to you later when you have a tax return. It's just part of this, but that's getting off the subject. Any more questions on landscape management? Everyone comes down to paying the taxes, but they love seeing the wallpaper. They love that W two. If I were well, we not to put, why would you or neighbor neighbor put gutter cleaning 